in the earlier indirect tax structure the taxpayer used to pay tax on tax that means once he used to pay the tax on the goods again he used to pay the tax on the same goods that is called cascading effect the different types of indirect taxes and some taxes were ruled by the state government and some taxes ruled by the central government whatever the amount you paid the tax amount you paid to purchase raw materials that will be credited in your account in the gst account while you are paying the output tax that amount will be deducted and the remaining balance will be collected from you Hello everyone I am Arun Kumar lecturer in department of commerce and management Vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence Mysore dear students welcome to the very first session on unit number 1 that is introduction to gst in the subject indirect taxes 1 which is there for fifth sem bcom students who are studying under university of mysore so dear students in this very first session we will be learning about so the meaning of gst and before gst what were the indirect taxes we had and what is the meaning of gst definitions of gst and types of gst and rates comes under gst so gst we all know that what is gst so it is a indirect tax right so gst is a indirect tax which is introduced in the year of 2000 yes in the year of 2017 so gst is introduced in the year of 2017 so earlier to 2017 we had different varieties of indirect taxes and the people used to got confused the suppliers the people the business people they used to get confused with the indirect taxes but after introducing gst it is very simple indirect taxes is nothing but only one tax that is called gst so indirect tax structure in india yes earlier to gst how was the indirect tax structure in india india had several as well indirect taxes such as service tax value added tax central excise etc which used to be levied at multiple supply chain stages some taxes were governed by the state and some by the center there was no unified and centralized tax on both goods and services yes earlier to gst we used to impose a different varieties of indirect taxes like value added tax service tax central sales tax or central excise and so on and with that the people used to get confused and few taxes used to be you know imposed by the state government and few taxes used to be imposed by the central government but after introducing after introducing the gst so it is a centralized tax where the government the central government is going to impose the tax on the supply of goods and services now we have a proper indirect tax structure in india issues in indirect tax yes earlier to gst we had so many issues with respect to indirect taxes so in 2017 the goods and services tax that is gst replaced several state and central indirect taxes some of those taxes before gst were yes vat that is value added tax service tax sales tax entry tax excise duty etc so levying gst eliminated the cascading effect taxes on the indian economy yes so in the issues earlier to gst we used to face so many problems like we had n number of indirect taxes the people used to get confused because which tax they are supposed to pay and with whom we are supposed to pay with that they used to get confused okay and they were in a dilemma that whether i am supposed to pay the tax or not but after introducing the gst they have a clear vision about what is the tax amount is supposed to pay and what is the last date to pay the tax amount whether he is supposed to pay the tax or not so about each and everything there is a clarification but earlier to that there were so many issues with respect to different varieties of indirect taxes where the tax payer used to get confused and sometimes he used to pay tax on tax that is called cash getting effect sometimes in the earlier indirect tax structure the tax payer used to pay tax on tax that means once he used to pay the tax on the goods again he used to pay the tax on the same goods that is called cascading effect so after imposing or after introducing the gst in india so it is very clear and it is very easy to the tax payer to know whether to pay the tax or not and the following is the list of indirect taxes in the pre gst regime so earlier to gst in the previous slide itself i have told you some examples 
which were the taxes we had earlier to GST. So here again, I'm going to explain you some other types of indirect taxes, which we add earlier to GST. So central excise duty we add earlier to GST, duties of exercise, additional duties of exercise, next additional duties of customs, special additional duty of customs, cess we had, state, VAT, central sales tax, purchase tax, luxury tax, entertainment tax, entry tax, taxes on advertisements, taxes on lotteries, betting and gambling. So earlier we had n number of indirect taxes. So what we did, we merged all the different types of indirect taxes and we called it as GST. Yes, we merged all the different varieties of indirect taxes and we call it as GST. So this GST is introduced in the year of 2017. So always whenever you're writing the definitions of GST, first you have to start with GST Act 2017. Yes, because the GST Act is passed in the year of 2017. So always while you're writing the definitions, you're supposed to write the GST Act 2017. Next, moving further, what is GST? Yes, so in the previous slides, you got to know what were the different types of taxes we had earlier to GST and what were the problems we used to face earlier to GST. Now, what is GST? So goods and service tax, that is GST, is levied on the supply of goods and services. Yes, first we have to understand this GST, the goods and service tax is levied on supply of goods and services. So GST is levied on what? GST is levied on goods and services. Next, goods and services tax law in India is a comprehensive multi-stage destination based tax that is levied on every value addition. Yes, it is a comprehensive because it includes all varieties of taxes. All varieties of taxes merged together and called as GST. So that is why it is called comprehensive and multi-stage. Yes, in each and every stage, we are supposed to pay the tax to the government. For example, if you are producing a product at the time of purchasing the raw material, you are supposed to pay tax for the raw material. At the time of manufacturing, again, you are supposed to pay tax to the government. At the time of selling the product, you have to pay tax to the government. That is why it is called multi-stage tax. Destination based. So what is this destination based? Because the ultimate taxpayer is the person who use the product or the service. If you are using the product, then you are liable to pay the tax to the government. If you are using the services, then you are liable to pay the tax to the government. So that is why GST is called destination based tax. So what is it called? Destination based tax because the ultimate user of the product or the service is liable to pay the tax to the government. GST is a single domestic indirect tax law for the entire country. Yes, single domestic indirect tax law for the entire country. So earlier we used to have the different types of indirect taxes and some taxes were ruled by the state government and some taxes ruled by the central government. But now the entire country is supposed to follow this GST and it is a single domestic indirect tax which is applicable all over India. So once again, I'll repeat you the meaning of GST. So goods and service tax is levied on the supply of goods and services and GST in India is a comprehensive multi-stage and destination based tax that is levied on every value addition and GST is a single domestic indirect tax law for the entire country. Next, types of GST. So under GST, we have four types. CGST, SGST, IGST and UTGST. So mainly we have four types, SGST, CGST, IGST and UTGST. So what is this CGST? CGST is nothing but Central Goods and Service Tax. So CGST is nothing but Central Goods and Services Tax where the tax collected under CGST directly goes to central government. Next, SGST. So SGST is nothing but 
स्टेट गुड्स एंड सर्विस टैक्स वेर द टैक्स कलेक्टेड अंडर एस जी एस टी डायरेक्टली गोज टू स्टेट गवर्नमेंट आई जी एस टी सो आई जी एस टी इज अ इंटीग्रेटेड गुड्स एंड सर्विस टैक्स इंटीग्रेटेड गुड्स एंड सर्विस टैक्स द अमाउंट कलेक्टेड बै द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड सम पोर्शन विल बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑन द लेटर स्टेज यू टी जी एस टी इट इज ऑल अबाउट यूनियन टेरिटरी गुड्स एंड सर्विस टैक्स so the tax collected under utgst directly goes to union territories next tax rates under gst so under gst so we have four slab rates so four different rates under gst 5% 12% 18% and 28% so with respect to that particular goods the tax will be imposed next features of gst so what are the features of gst the first feature is subsuming of 17 taxes at central and state level yes so it is merged we merged all the different indirect taxes together and we call it as gst so that is the beauty and that is the fe first feature of gst next one consumption based tax consumption based is nothing but the person who want to consume the product or the person who want to receive the services that person is liable to pay the tax to the government that is called consumption based tax so gst is always collected from the person who consume the product or who enjoys the services one tax rate across the country yes earlier we had different types of taxes and countless tax rates but now all over the country only one tax system if 5% tax is applicable on one product then all over the country same rate of tax is applicable if 28% of tax is applicable on refrigerator in karnataka then all over the other states all over the country the tax on refrigerator is 28% they can't change the rate of tax on a particular product taxable be event supply of goods or services so when we collect the tax when the supplier supply the goods to the recipient when the supplier supply the services to the recipient at that time we pay the tax to the government or we collect the tax to the government so what we will do the taxable event is when the supply occurs when the supply happens by the supplier then the taxable event will arise no differentiation in goods or services yes we will not going to differentiate between the goods and services we going to treat in the same way about with respect to goods and services comprehensive tax on goods and services yes it is a comprehensive because we merge all different varieties of taxes and we call it as gst so still it is comprehensive because still the people are understanding what is gst conditions of gst how it is applicable on our businesses still they are in confusion still they are struggling a lot to understand this gst so it is a comprehensive tax on goods and services no tax on tax yes the beauty of gst is there is no tax on tax there is no cash getting effect so you need not to pay tax on the goods which you already paid the tax so that is called no tax on tax free flow of credit so credit is nothing but it's not like loan and all credit is nothing but if you are manufacturer if you are purchasing the raw materials and some inputs to produce the product so whatever the tax you paid on raw materials the tax will be given credited in your account while you are paying the final tax on the final product while you are paying the output tax on the final product at that time you can take this credit advantage that is called free flow of credit so whatever the amount you paid the tax amount you paid to purchase raw materials that will be credited in your account in the gst account while you are paying the output tax that amount will be deducted and the remaining balance will be collected from you value addition tax at each stage yes so at each stage we are going to add some values for for example so you are going to purchase raw material you are going to convert the raw material into for semi finished goods to convert it into semi finished goods you are going to spend some amount so you are going to add that value again semi finished goods into finished goods again there also you are going to add some value so in each and every you know process you are going to add some value so that is called value addition tax at each stage 
advantages of GST. So what are the advantages we have? Removing the cash getting effect of tax. So as I explained in the earlier slide, tax on tax. So GST is going to avoid the tax on tax problems and helps the suppliers. Next, higher threshold limit for GST registration. So in the earlier indirect taxes system, so the threshold limit was very limited, but now they are given the threshold limit up to 40 lakhs. So if your turnover is less than 40 lakhs, you need not to register under the GST authority. If your threshold limit crosses, if your turnover crosses 40 lakhs, then you have to register. Next, composition scheme for small businesses. Yes, if you are a small business entity, if you are running a small business entity, then they will not collect 28% or 18% or 12% of tax. They will collect a very less percentage of tax that is 2% or 1% based upon what kind of goods you are you know, selling. Simpler online facilities for GST compliances. Yes, so you need not to visit any offices, any physical offices to get registered with the GST authority. Directly you can open the website and you can submit your online form requesting for the GST registration. Relatively lesser compliance under GST. Yes, compared to earlier indirect tax structure, in GST the compliances are very less, right? The confusions are very less. It is very clear to all, it is very transparent to all. Anyone can go and access to the information. Anyone can go and register with the GST authority through online. Define treatment for e-commerce activities. Yes, earlier to GST we had n number of problems with respect to e-commerce, but now there's a specific rules and regulations made by the GST authority with respect to e-commerce business. So everyone has to follow that particular rules and regulations. Increased efficiency in logistic. So earlier we used to have some problems with respect to transportation of goods from one place to another place. So after introducing GST, that is minimized. So they can easily transfer the goods from the place to place. Regulating the unorganized sector. Yes, it's going to regulate the unorganized sector. If any illegal thing is happening, they are going to identify, the authority is going to identify and they are going to send a notice and they make them to register with the GST authority. So these are all the advantages of GST. So with this, I'm going to wind up this session. I'm going to meet you in the next session with few more topics with respect to GST. Until then, thank you all.